Hello and welcome back. Thank you as always for tuning in. We've got a very interesting conversation today and one that I hope that you find clarifies things for you, that illuminates things for you, and more importantly than anything else, that inspires you to practice. That's what I hope for more than anything else much more than likes here on YouTube, views, subscriptions, which, by the way, subscription arrow right here, if, if you haven't joined us yet. I mean, I'm just saying. But above all that, it is your own dedication and commitment to your spiritual practice that means the most. So this discussion today is in response to an excellent question. I mean, excellent recent question about control. And the topic is who's in control anyway? So thank you for asking this question that occurs to everyone on the spiritual path at one time or another. I mean, it just does. And it especially occurs to students of this course at one time or another, because we're invited to give control away, 100%, hmm, absolutely, totally, completely. Yeah, we're invited to do just that in many different places here in the course, and in many different combinations of language many places. So who's really in control anyway? And the backdrop for this is the randomness of our thought process, where one minute we're thinking about kindergarten, and the next minute we're thinking about what we're going to do two years from now, or tomorrow's sales meeting, or what we're going to do this evening, what we're going to have for dinner. And then we think about yesterday's dinner. And then we're back to our childhood. And then we're at tomorrow's sales meeting. And then our knee hurts right now. Oh, wait a minute. My, I got to adjust my eyebrow or, or my hair. And gosh, I wonder what so-and-so is going to say when I call them tomorrow afternoon at three. And, and, and you know, all kinds of stuff. And, and the mind just vacillates. And it appears random as it can be in modern instant messaging language and text language, we would say random AF. And it, it certainly appears that way, doesn't it? So it seems like we're not in control of that. And we're led to ponder this very question, are we actually ever in control? And who's in control anyway? Okay, so it is hardly a surprise that the answer to this question, are we ever really in control anyway, is both no and yes. And let's answer a question with another question, who's really in control here? Yeah. So yes, no, and a question. All right, well, that's spirituality on a platter for you. If you've studied Buddhism or Eastern philosophy in any way, you're probably laughing at this right now because it sounds like something that a Buddhist teacher would say. Mm. <laughs> yeah, well, it is. So let's make some sense of this from the standpoint of A Course in Miracles, specifically. We're invited to give control over to our inner teacher, all of it, 100%. We're told in many different ways and in many different places here in the Course that our forgiveness is either total or it's not at all. It's total or it's not at all. 
In other words, we can't harbor certain grudges against certain people or groups of people or certain compound phenomena that pop up in our experience here in the world. We can't love on 99.9% of the population and hate on that other small fraction and expect to experience the peace of God, because that's not total forgiveness, is it? So it's not forgiveness. You can't be partially awakened. In other words, you are or you are not. That is literally all or nothing. So we're invited to allow the all. And here in the present moment, we practice this forgiveness under the guidance of our inner teacher, and we're specifically invited to give over control. So what this course means by this, what Jesus is talking about here, is giving up our need to manipulate and handle and control and orchestrate and alter and guide and push around and boss around every single thing and every single person here in the dream that we're in. Apparently, it's a dream. We're invited here with our worldly conditioning to be a boss, to dominate, whether you actually hold out a position of leadership or you're a manager or a boss or a CEO or whatever your position looks like here in the world, we're invited to be in control. We're encouraged to be in control. And we're shamed when we're not in control. Not, not very helpful, is it? Because when we appear to be in control and we take or sees what we perceive to be control by ourselves without the guidance of our inner teacher, things don't work out really very well for us. They may be real great for a period of time, but it doesn't last. If you're bossing people around, they're going to resent you if you're not leading with the Holy Spirit, if you think that you've got to just do all of this on your own, then we don't know of our ego self. All ends. We don't know what's going to happen in 15 minutes because things just change. And they change, and we get so freaked out and frustrated and afraid of change here in the world because we want to control all phenomena. We want control so badly, we're in fact terrified of, of things like the weather, of things, anything that can or might possibly upset our grand plans. And we become deeply anxious and, and frustrated all the time. We fly off the handle in fits of rage because there's a line at the checkout stand at the store. Well, guess what? We're not the only ones that appear at the store. I, I mean, I really, the, the things that we fret and, and become nervous about aren't even there. And it takes dedication and commitment to our spiritual practice to really bring this to light, to bring these illusions to the truth, as the Course puts it. What happens is the truth shines them away. We're invited to give control of our entire experience away. So in this sense, do we really have control now? So let's talk about the yes, because the answer is also yes, of course we're in control. We're in control of right now. We're in control of our mind, whether we give this control away to nothingness or not, whether we deny it, which we can, that's control. Denying that you are the son of God is exercising control of your mind. You're choosing to remain asleep, and that's all or we can accept this, we can forgive. We have the power of decision right now in the present moment, 
it is really the only power that we have here in the world, and it is enough. It is more than enough, as it turns out. Here, where everything seems to be coming at us in a random spinning ball of excess activity and frustration and utter chaos, which this world is. I mean, there's some cool stuff, too, and some beauty, but it never lasts. So here, while we appear to be here, this present moment power of decision is enough because we can give our entire experience over to the Holy Spirit in this moment to the extent that we allow ourselves to do that and we consciously, actively choose this under our control. The more we give away control, the more we actually appear to have it. But we must give it away completely because it's not really us that is in control. It's not our ego self that's governing or handling or manipulating anything at all. What's very, very important and, of course, mortally threatening, existentially troubling and dreadful to the ego is the fact that when we give control away, which our conditioning wants us to seize and to keep and to clutch like a precious object, when we give it away, we're not giving it away to a foreign power. We're not giving our control over our entire experience, what we say, what we do how we view things, we're not giving this away to an outside source. Our inner teacher is inner. This is why it's called our inner teacher on this series of videos. Inner, inner. I can't emphasize that enough. The Holy Spirit is part of our mind. It's us. You're not giving control away to an outside power. You're allowing the part of our mind that knows who we are, that retains the memory of God to let us go forth under its guidance and remember who we are. We forgive under the guidance of our inner teacher. We extend love under the guidance of our inner teacher. We're not giving our power away to something outside of us. We're allowing our inner teacher to run the show. We're allowing this part of our mind to run the show. The more we practice this, the more we're able to do this, and importantly, the more willing and excited we are to do this. Because what happens then when you start to give complete control away is you realize that things don't seem the same in spinning ball of rock. They don't seem the same. What you look upon begins to change dramatically. With your change of mind, it is a ball of stress to attempt to order and control and manipulate all phenomena. And we find that it is a waste of time. We've wasted enough time, haven't we? When we attempt to run the show ourselves, we don't know what's best for every single living thing throughout space and time, guaranteed, but our inner teacher does. We try to control what other people think and, and do, and it winds up causing us grief. It stresses us out and gives us anxiety. 
its suffering. Giving over control of your entire experience to the Holy Spirit is, of course, threatening to the ego. You may be experiencing this. So I invite you to, when you experience resistance, to forgive the object of that resistance, whatever it is. Anything that's not wholly joyous is, in fact, an opportunity for forgiveness. But we all, curiously and even paradoxically enough, say in the world, we all say in the world that we want control. We want to be in control. All right, so the way that you really are in control is to give it away completely, to not be in control. I'm not running this show. This is a pixelated image on your screen. It's your inner teacher that's speaking to you, especially when something lands. It was your inner teacher that invited you to turn this video on. And if you are just scrolling YouTube and this popped up, uh, that's your inner teacher. You're here. You're watching it. You're listening to our inner teacher. You're responding to the call. You've heard it and you've answered. That is so, so important. And, and I, I hope that you get the importance of that. Any resistance is of the ego, and expect it, of course, expect that on the path. But we're invited, as we give over control completely to our inner teacher, to trust in our inner teacher's guidance. That's how we do it. Want to be in control? Give it away completely. There's a direct analogy here with our true forgiveness. Giving something away is how we keep it in our mind. We give love to keep it in our mind. Giving something away is how you keep it. It is exactly the opposite of the way the world sees it. When we give something away, we appear to be out that thing. We lack it in the world. In the thought system of the Holy Spirit and the way things really actually are, what you give away, you keep in your mind. Extend the miracle of true forgiveness under the guidance of your inner teacher. Invite your inner teacher to run the show control it mm -hmm. completely. Then you will find, as you do this, you'll discover that the decision for the Holy Spirit, for truth, becomes more and more habitual and automatic. Because we can't control all of the drama that comes up in the world. However, you have direct control over how you experience that. As we go forth on this path, you may discover, if you've been doing this for a while, that things that used to bother you immensely no longer trouble you at all. It's as though they're nothing. Exactly. They are nothing. Now, this is true whether you've been doing this for 20 to 30 years or whether you've been doing it for 20 to 30 minutes. It's still exactly the same. Who were you? What used to bother you before and now? Does it even impact you the same way? And when you start to discover that, no, it doesn't, I'm a lot calmer. I'm a lot more composed, more loving, more forgiving, more patient. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's... Your inner teacher doing its work, allow it all. We are fully capable of making what we call quantum leaps here. 
with all of this. We are fully capable of eliminating scenes from the dream through the power of our true forgiveness. The more you give away control, the more you realize, yeah, you are in control. And it's, it's the Holy Spirit is us. We're not giving it away to an outside power because there is no outside power. God is. You know who you are. I know that you know. We all know. So why we're interested in spirituality. And those that don't appear to be interested in spirituality in this lifetime, right now, on Spinning Ball of Rock, in this thing that we consider to be linear time, those who do not appear to be interested will, of course, be interested. When? Yeah. Whenever. But that's not for us to control. So we forgive what is in front of us in our experience. We give our entire experience over to our inner teacher. Nothing is more threatening than that to the ego. The ego is nothing. The ego is nothing. We've got a mala or a rosary, click. The ego is nothing, click. The ego is nothing, I forgive it. it. Mm. Do that, yeah. If you've never forgiven the ego, do that. It's nothing. All right, so I hope that you've found this discussion helpful. And well, in, in true spiritual form, the answer is yes, no, maybe, <laughs> and all of the above. So maybe the answer is just yes, right? Yes, no, maybe, all of the above. But really, the, the way that we recognize our own power is by completely giving control away. As we give it away, we're actually still in it because the Holy Spirit runs the show. Remember, the Holy Spirit is us. It is that part of our mind that knows who we are. I invite you to allow this part of our mind to guide you totally. All right. So I thank you for this question, which is, is very, very important and so, so common on the path because we've all thought this at some point. Am I really in control? W-T-A-F. If you don't know what that means, I invite you to Google that. Look it up. <laughs> because it's just, it's something that happens for us. We have this question and we ask it ourselves because the world wants us to be a certain way, yet it brings nothing but pain and suffering. And what we all really want is the peace of God. So the solution to having what we really want, the peace of God and nothing else, why and nothing else, there is nothing else. So the solutions have to come from outside spinning ball of rock. They don't come from the things of this world, like temporal control and temporal and political power and financial power and the strength of our biceps, all of those types of things. They don't, they don't come from that at all. It comes from our relaxing and trusting the guidance of our inner teacher, our giving up control completely. All right. So, other comments and questions are, of course, more than welcome. And as I'm doing here, I'm always more than willing to pause our procession through the text of A Course in Miracles to have a discussion just such as this. So if there is a topic that's coming up for you in your spiritual practice 
that you would like to see me cover in a, an extended piece here, a 20 to 30 minute discussion on this series of videos, I'd be more than happy to do that. Feel welcome to ask and any other comments and questions are most welcome. So again, the subscription button is here. That's the arrow in the corner of your screen. When you click or hover over that, you'll be prompted to subscribe and join us. And I hope that you'll do that. Thank you to all of you who have recently joined us. A number of these videos appear each week, well, because our spiritual practice is constant. There's always an opportunity to forgive coming up. The more we're aware of them and we know what to do, the better. All right. Thank you, as always, for joining me. I'll see you soon.